Hi guys, welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about all the new features in Windows 11 25H2, the full official release. So in this video, I'm also going to explain to you some things related to Windows 11 25H2, and we're going to go through some of the new features that you can expect in Windows 11 25H2. And of course, if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBased channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with a video. Windows 11 25H2 has been released this week on a Tuesday on the 30th of September and the build that was released first if we go to system and then in the about section is the build 26200.6725 this is the first official 25h2 build one thing that I have to remind you is that Windows 11 25h2 is only an enable on package basically just a version change so the base platform is still the same as 24h2 so all these features you can encounter also on 24h2 even if you don't upgrade to 25h2 but of course in our videos we're always gonna make Mention the latest version so of course we're talking about Windows 11 25 H2. So now moving on to new features first of all we're going to talk about the new AI features and we're talking about the click to do feature for Copilot Plus PCs first. We have the new and popular action tags in the click to do context menu and also the new concise summaries with the summarize action that you can have access to in the click to do app. Also the new agent and settings will now have a direct navigation link to the corresponding settings page from the agent search results. This is of course rolling out to Copilot Plus PCs. Now the two features that I'm going to mention are hidden features so they are not rolling out officially but they can be enabled if you use Vive tool. I'm going to make an updated video very soon in which I'll show you how to enable all the hidden features from this update but of course we're going to cover them and first of all we are talking about the new start menu. I remind you again this is not officially rolling out but it is hidden inside the operating system and it can be enabled. As we've talked about before the new start menu now combines the pinned app section and the recommended section with the all apps section. So we have here up top the pinned app section where we can click on show all to expand this. We also have the recommended section which of course we can click on show all also and we have the all apps section where we can change the view from category to grid and to list. My personal favorite is the category view. If you right click on the start menu and then go to start settings you're going to have the option to disable show recently added apps, show recommended files, show recommendations for tips and so on and this way if you open up the start menu again, you'll notice that the recommended section will now disappear. So this is a quick way to disable the recommended section, which I think is pretty nice. Alongside with that, we also have the new phone sidebar here. If you have your phone connected to your Windows operating system, you'll see this. This has also received quite a few improvements, even for iOS, where it's also going to show you recent apps installed and so on. And you have messages, calls, photos, the recent photos and messages, the option to quickly send files and some other things that it can do. For example, customize recent activity which will open up the new phone link app. In addition to that, we also have this quick toggle to quickly turn off or turn on the phone sidebar. I think that is pretty nice. But I remind you again, this is a hidden feature. You will not have it on your system by default. Just wait for my updated video in which I'll show you how to manually enable this. Of course, if you're interested, you don't need to necessarily enable this if you don't want it. Microsoft is also working on the new copy dialogues and we will now have dark mode for that. And related to that, we have the new copy dialogues, the new confirmation when permanently deleting a file and also the renaming a protected file dialog which now support dark mode and I think that is pretty nice and the new copy dialog looks something like this I think this is a pretty nice change that again it is a hidden feature in this build I'll show you in an upcoming video how to enable this if you want on the desktop and especially on laptops Microsoft is adding the ability to change the location of these flyouts basically the flyouts for the sound and also for the brightness which is happening of course on a laptop. You can change the location of these flyouts by opening up the settings app and going into system and then notifications and at the bottom of this page you'll notice this new option position of on-screen indicators, volume, brightness and other controls will appear in this location and you can change it from bottom center which is default to top left or top center if you want and this is how the top center looks alongside with these nice animations that appear whenever you switch between flyouts. I think this is also a great addition. There's also a new taskbar change for IT administrators, uh, which no longer need to restart Explorer.exe to apply the pinning policy. After applying the policy, users might see a pin on their taskbar within approximately eight hours, depending on the refresh interval. In the file explorer, Microsoft is adding the new AI actions. So basically, whenever you right click on an image, for example, this one, you're going to get these new AI actions, which will allow you to do certain actions, for example, visual search with pink, blur background with photos, erase objects with photos, and remove background with paint. So let's see 
see what they are doing one by one. If we select Visual Search with Bing, it will automatically open up the Microsoft Edge browser and it will start to do a visual search, which will basically search for similar photos. I think this is also pretty interesting. The other few actions are blur background with photos. If we select this, it will open it up automatically in the Photos app in the blur background section. It is going to automatically blur the background of our image. Of course, our picture doesn't necessarily have a background, but of course, it's still going to try that. And you have certain options that allow you to customize this. We also have erase objects with photos, which will open up the Photos app yet again in the generative erase section, which you can auto apply and change the price size of. And finally, we have remove background with paint, which will open up the paint app and it will remove the background of our photo. In this case, the whole photo, because we don't have a background. These actions are pretty nice. They use AI and are not that intrusive in my opinion, so feel free to use them if you want. There are also a few File Explorer improvements and fixes that I think are worth mentioning. For example, the File Explorer context menu has been updated to remove the accent colored backplate behind package tabs icons and the open with list. When right clicking a file, for example, snipping tool, this makes icons easier to see. And they also made an underlying change to help improve the performance of launching cloud files from File Explorer and loading context menus. And also some fixes, icons and text would have become overlapping on the desktop when using increased text scaling. And also icons in the details preview navigation panes of File Explorer weren't properly mirrored when using Arabic or Hebrew display languages. This was also fixed. Related to Windows Share, if we select a file and try to share it, you're going to notice that Microsoft now allows you to pin your favorite apps in the Windows Share window. And you're going to have here the option to pin your apps. Inside the settings app, we have one of the pilots, I would say, of this new update. Inside system and then we're going to have the advanced settings page. This is a page or section in the settings app for advanced users, but it's highly useful in my opinion because from here, for example, you can enable the end task option in the taskbar, which is this option to automatically end the task without having to open up the task manager. We have the file explorer section where you're going to have a lot of options. For example, show file extensions, show hidden and system files, show full path and title bar, show options to run as different users and start, show empty drives and more. And also you can choose the repository folder here, which is something pretty useful. We have virtual workspace with options related to remote desktop, which we can turn on and uh, see remote desktop users. We have the terminal where we can change the default terminal app to host command line apps, PowerShell options, and also enable sudo if we want to enable sudo directly in Windows 11. We have the developer mode, which we can enable always when I turn this on. I remember back in the early days of Windows 11 when we had Android apps on Windows 11. Unfortunately, that feature was removed, sadly, but of course, we also have device portal and device discovery and dev drive options, the options to create a dev drive, which is just a quick link to the disks and volume section and the control antivirus behavior, which is also just a shortcut. Under privacy and security, there have been some changes applied by Microsoft. The manage or clear your Bing search history entry under settings, privacy and security search and search history has been removed. You can now directly manage your Bing search history directly from the privacy dashboard accessible via the privacy resources link under related settings. Inside time and language, date and time, and also language and region, there have been a lot of options that were moved from the old control panel to the new settings app. For example, you can now add additional clocks, change your time server, and customize date and time formatting, including AM and PM symbols directly from settings, time and language, and date and time. And inside the language and region section, you're going to have access to new options such as number and currency formats, Unicode UTF-8 support, and options to copy language and region settings to other accounts. Also inside settings and accessibility, Microsoft has moved the keyboard character repeat and cursor blink rate settings uh, in this section, for example, in keyboard or the mouse pointer in touch settings. Some improvements related to settings, Microsoft made some underlying changes to help improve the performance of loading the apps list inside apps and then installed apps. And they also fix an issue where in settings, system, storage, disks and volumes might show a link for BitLocker drive encryption in unsupported cases, and it would also display an error. This has also been fixed. There is also a new keyboard shortcut in this update. If you use Windows plus minus, it will insert an E in dash. And if you use the Windows shift plus minus, it will insert an EM dash. Related to the narrator app, Microsoft introduces the new Braille viewer, and also it will offer a smoother and more natural experience in Word with improved voice feedback and reliable continuous reading. Inside settings, accounts, pass keys, and then advanced options, Microsoft will now allow you to use plugin credential manager for pass keys. And of course, for this, you're going to need to have Windows Hello set up, which you can customize from accounts and then sign in options. We also have some new gaming improvements. For example, the Xbox controller support for gaming on Windows.
Windows 11 has been improved. Short pressing the Xbox button opens the game bar. And also a new change that Microsoft is introducing is when long pressing the Xbox button, it will open Task View. Another improvement, underlying changes have been made to improve performance when gaming with game bar or other overlays active on top of user's game. This update might especially help users with multiple monitors that have different refresh rates. And also inside the operating system, Microsoft has also added a new dialogue for when an app can't open, which will better match the Windows 11 design principles. But Microsoft has also changed the notification center functionality, which will now be available on secondary monitors. And of course, to open it, just click on the date and time in the system tray. And we also have some new app updates. Of course, we have the new Copilot app homepage. If you open up the Copilot app and you have updated it to the latest version, you're going to see that we have this new homepage, which is actually pretty cool in my opinion. And um, it has some nice features that you can use if you are into AI and so on. And this is basically the first setup. We can click on skip. And this is how the new homepage looks with these tiles that will show you recent conversations and so on. And of course, Microsoft Store has also been updated with improvements regarding reliability and the homepage, which will now show different sections and more AI stuff. I know that's not a popular thing, but this is Microsoft's vision. In addition to all of these, of course, Microsoft is introducing a lot of fixes, a lot of improvements. We're going to have the whole list of fixes and improvements in the article below. I'm not going to mention them in this video. In addition to all these features and fixes, of course, Microsoft will roll out some of the other features that we've talked about in the previous video about all the new features of Windows 11 25 H2 in the coming months. And in every month, basically, Microsoft will have some big features rolling out so that they can test them well and they will come without issues on the main release of Windows 11. And uh, this is basically everything that you can expect from the latest 25H2 update in the main release. As I've said, pay attention, 25H2 is just an enablement package. The same features will also be available on the version 24H2, at least for now. And of course, I strongly recommend you to upgrade to the latest version if you can, because it will also be the best one for your operating system. So for more information, you can check out the article below in the video's description. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.